Heading into 2025, housing predictions include lower interest rates, higher inventory, much of it through new construction, and pre-owned home sellers still cushioned by high equity and low fixed rate mortgages. If you're looking in the excerpts, you have a lot of opportunity with new construction. If the lengthy commute doesn't work for you, you're more likely to be looking at a pre-owned home. But either way, strategy, planning, and negotiation are going to be your biggest tools when it comes to getting the best deal you can on a new home. Your approach will be different depending on whether the home is pre-owned versus when it's new construction, but your core tools will always be the same. For example, with a pre-owned home, you only have one seller and you can't see patterns like you can with new construction. In new construction, you can see data where one builder is selling dozens of homes within the same community. So you can't see all that with a pre-owned, but you can definitely still be strategic in your research. First of all, there are key things you always want to look for in the listing that show a seller's motivation to sell. Things like long days on the market and signs of a divorce situation where a closet is mostly empty. All right, that's a good start. Other things like when the home is vacant can potentially be a sign that a seller's paying two mortgage payments and will really want to get that home sold. A good agent should also pay attention to how the listing agent interacts with them. For example, a listing agent who responds very quickly and shows a lot of flexibility is another good sign of the seller's motivation. The listing description can also show signs of motivation, like the verbiage may make offers of seller concessions, or sometimes it'll come right out and tell you the seller's motivated. Your agent should also pay attention to the history of price changes and whether or not they actually represent an opportunity. All right, now, like when the home started out overpriced and now it's priced right at market value, you have to be able to see through that. Next, there are certain things you should always ask the listing agent. If they haven't already, have your agent inquire about the seller's situation. Like many times, the listing agent will be very open and you can get some great information on how motivated they are or what factors may make them more motivated. Another strategy to employ with pre-owned homes is to look for the dated home that is an otherwise good condition because I can promise you, those homes will sit. Now, you may be thinking that you don't want an outdated home. Well, you're not the only one. Buyers want updated, shiny, and new, and sellers know it. By going for the home that looks outdated, but has great bones, you may get yourself a fantastic deal and then be able to update the home exactly how you like it. What you wanna do is look for phrases like as is. But if you're going this direction, okay, I must warn you to read the seller's disclosure closely. This is only a good strategy if the home's structure is in good condition and doesn't need any major repairs. Okay, we're talking like foundation work. Plus, while you're reviewing the seller's disclosure, you might be pleasantly surprised. I mean, sometimes you can get some amazing bells and whistles by a seller who added all kinds of updates, but just didn't know that replacing the paint and flooring would make it sell faster for a higher price. We spoke with a seller once who had installed like a super expensive filtration system. Uh, he'd installed a generator. He soundproofed one of the rooms as a home office. He put a radiant barrier in, in the attic. And, and the seller spoke at some length about all the things he had replaced. And, and I remember thinking, you know, like a buyer won't see the potential in any of these things because they won't be able to look past the dated flooring and dirty walls. Sellers won't always know the best updates to do. And you can take advantage of that combined with the lack of vision most other buyers will have. So do yourself a favor and prepare to look past easily fixed cosmetic issues. Look for the big ticket items being replaced, but the rest of the home being dated, okay? So things like new roofs, hot water heaters, HVAC systems, you know, and you wanna see those coupled with old flooring and dirty walls. Uh, these homes, they were well taken care of where it matters, Plus, you can always request a flooring and paint allowance. I mean, chances are the home's been sitting on the market a while and the sellers are probably pretty motivated. Now, you have some strategies that'll apply the same whether the home is pre-owned or new construction as well. Now, a big one here is seasonality. Both new construction and pre-owned sales tend to decrease during the winter months, which can give you more leverage when negotiating prices. The Dallas market, follows a fairly predictable seasonal pattern. January is typically the slowest month with activity gradually picking up in February and then accelerating through the spring and summer from around March to late June. Once fall arrives and kiddos are back in school, 
the market slows down again. This slowdown, like it'll usually continue throughout the fall, kind of culminating through December and bottoming out in January. Let me show you some examples from previous years. We can even take it all the way back to 2003 through 2004, and I'm telling you the change in seasonality has hardly changed. For example, June of 2003's median sales price was 171,975, while January of 2004's median sales price was 160,429. It was almost a full 10% price decrease in just those seven months. Now fast forward 10 years to 2013 through 2014. June's median sales price was 239,756. And then the next year, January of 2014, had a median sales price of only 206,772. The decrease percentage from summer to winter was 8.62%. So you can see that while the prices, they ease up overall, right? They're getting higher. The seasonal price drop is staying pretty similar. We can fast forward even another decade to our most recent seasonal data, and you can see that our seasonal pattern is almost exactly where we were 20 years ago. June of 2023 had a median sales price of 477,767, and January of 2024 had a median sales price of 444,305. So the price decreased from June to July in 2003 to 2004, was 9.33%. And then this past year, it was 9.3%. So the seasonal price drop factor is almost always something you can count on. In fact, in all of history, the only time we didn't see the usual eight to 10% decrease was during COVID from 2020 to 2021. Okay, because that year the prices actually increased by 10.37%. But then the next year, the seasonal change went right back to normal with a decrease of 9.62% from June of 2021 to January of 2022. So basically what you need to know is if you enter the market during spring and summer, you're going to pay a lot more compared to when the market cools in the fall and winter. So we've talked about strategies for pre-owned homes and strategies that apply to both like pre-owned and new construction, but let's talk about some that specifically work with new construction. New construction homes present a different scenario, but with that, they also present some different opportunities. Builders are selling multiple homes within a single community and often hundreds across various communities. Now, builders a lot of times will have substantial financial resources, but there are times that they may be more vulnerable to market fluctuations, especially if they have a lot more sitting that they need to sell. So identifying those weaknesses can seriously benefit you as a buyer. Unlike individual home sellers, builders tend to follow patterns, which makes research all the more important. You need to know the prices that builders have been accepting in a particular neighborhood. For example, within a community, one sales representative might work for like a financially stable builder instructed to sell only at or above list price, and then we would see that, okay? This would be reflected in the sales data. Others might have more flexibility. I mean, maybe selling homes at around 97% of the list price. What you really wanna find though, okay, is a builder whose company is struggling financially and needs to quickly close sales. By identifying that builder and understanding the prices they've been accepting, you can better position yourself for negotiating. Let's take a look at a couple of communities so I can show you what I'm talking about. We'll start in the ever popular Salina at the Mosaic community. Now they have several builders, but let's take a look at two that are of similar quality. Okay, let's look at Perry and Highland. Both had several sales on the MLS in the last 90 days, but while Highland Homes showed discounts on most of their recent sales, Perry Homes only discounted three of their sales. Most of Perry's homes were sold at 100% of asking price. Their average sold price was 99% of their average list price. But Highland, on the other hand, all right, like I said, they had a lot more discounts. Their sales were at an average of 96% of their list price. We see this kind of thing happening all over DFW too, obviously not just in the higher demand areas. In fact, in some less popular areas, you may even find average sold prices as low as like 85% of list price. Your goal to find out is what prices are the builders accepting at the community you're interested in, how motivated are they to sell, 
and how far can you get them to come down in price? Now, you may be saying, Wendy, this sounds great, but where do I find this kind of data? Well, that's a great question. And I'll tell you that you will have to take full advantage of your realtor during your research because Texas is a non-disclosure state. So without access to the MLS, you won't be able to see what builders have actually been accepting price-wise. Plus, gathering this information requires a significant amount of effort potentially hours of detailed research. And this is a major undertaking. And to be honest, it's unlikely you'll find many realtors willing to invest that much time. In all fairness, it does go above and beyond what's typically expected. Take Royce City, for example. It's a fast growing suburb east of Dallas. In Royce City alone, there are 21 new construction communities. Each of these communities has multiple builders totaling over 100 different builder groups within these communities all of which have sales data that needs to be analyzed. And it's a lot of work, but this information is crucial to ensure you get the best deal. So if I haven't made it clear enough already, step number one in new construction buying is research. Your next step is to create a competitive landscape. And, and here's what I mean. You wanna take a good look at the builders in your target area. Review the different communities and floor plan options, and then choose a few favorite builders. You're going to get those builders to compete against each other for your sale. The biggest part of this strategy is ensuring that builders are aware you're considering multiple options. Simply visiting different model homes, okay, that's not gonna be enough. The sales consultants need to know you're considering multiple builders in multiple communities. I mean, we have had great success by communicating this through you know, text or multiple phone calls, directly comparing the builders to one another. There's a natural competition between them, and it's important to leverage that rivalry to your advantage. Moving on, here's another tip you need to know. Builders are often more motivated to make deals on completed homes that have been sitting on the market for a while. And this will require some research and access to the MLS because you'll wanna focus on homes that have been finished but haven't sold for some time. Once a home is completed, builders start losing money on it, all right, due to soft costs. We're talking like debt payments and utilities. As a buyer, keep this in mind when viewing homes. Understanding this gives you leverage to negotiate a better deal. Remember, these tips are most effective, all right, when used together. So imagine how powerful this strategy can be when you combine it with the first two steps. Moving on to the next step now, and it is just as important, keep an eye on monthly and quarterly sales quotas. Sales reps are often given targets for how many homes they need to sell, both from new builds and existing inventory. I mean, maybe they'll receive bonuses for hitting those targets. Knowing when those goals are due can give you an edge in negotiations. Uh, builders will often hint at this, all right? They'll mention incentives that expire on a specific date, which typically aligns with the end of their quarter. Keep in mind, each builder has its own fiscal calendar, and some may work with like monthly rather than quarterly incentives. So you'll need to ask or let your agent ask. The key is to time your home search near the end of their quota period to catch sales reps eager to meet their goals. I mean, this timing can be a powerful bargaining tool. Next up, you'll wanna get a knowledgeable third party to negotiate for you. Now, this might sound a bit self-serving, but it is true. I've already mentioned why this is important when it comes to data gathering, but that's not the only reason why hiring a good realtor can make a huge difference and the kind of deal you get on a new home. When you walk into a model home on your own, you have to remember a good sales consultant is observing everything about you. If your body language gives away that you love the home, that's going to hurt your negotiating power. Also, you're probably not gonna get the same level of respect that a realtor would. You might hear things like, you know, we've already sold dozens of homes, so there's no reason to offer incentives. However, a realtor can counter that by pointing out that those homes were actually sold at 80% of the list price. Having access to that kind of data is key to negotiating effectively, and realtors are the ones who have it. An agent who has plenty of new construction sales experience knows exactly the kinds of games sales consultants will try to use, and they know not to fall for them. Now, here's a big one we need to talk about. Don't reveal your full budget to the sales consultant. In fact, when you start talking with sales consultants, it's not necessarily a bad idea to tell them your budget is lower than what you actually plan to spend. For example, if your budget is 750,000, tell them it's 700,000. 
Remember, these reps, they are motivated to close the deal, so let them work to meet that $700,000 mark. All right, yet another strategy is to always compare lenders. Once you've settled on a price, it might seem like you're done, but there's still an important step left. All right, remember how I mentioned that sometimes builders might make you think you're getting a great deal, but it could be a trick. With new construction sales, this is often where that trick will happen, all right? Builders and lenders, they're often affiliated, and they might offer you incentives that seem like a good deal, but actually aren't. So pay close attention to those numbers to make sure a discount is really a discount. Now, it may be that you're flexible with where you buy a home with your emphasis more on getting the best deal. Well, lucky for you, we've done some of the homework for you. We created a video where we spotlight the most motivated new construction neighborhoods in Dallas. You can watch that video right here. In the meantime, Wendy out.